Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Surface Area of Rectangular Solids Part 1. So here we have a rectangular shape in three-dimensional space, but instead of trying to find the volume of it, we want to figure out what the entire area is all around its surface. So it's easier just to see with a picture. And I draw this as a wireframe just so you can see kind of behind it and kind of like see all of the, all the faces there. So when we want to find the surface area, we call it SA, surface area. It's the same thing as area, it's just the area of all of the faces on all of the sides. So you can see that there are six sides to all of these rectangular solids. There's the top side and the bottom side, that's two. There's the left and the right side, that's four. And then there's the front and then the back, that's six. So there's always going to be six sides. And so every one of those sides is rectangular, right? You can see that every side is rectangular. So really, in order to find the volume, I'm sorry, the surface area of a rectangular solid, we need to find the area of this face and add it up to the area of this face and add it to the area of this one and this one and this one and this one. There's six of them. So we're gonna find kind of the area six times sort of and add them all together. That's the total surface area. Now, we'll make it a little bit easier by drawing a picture um, I'll show you the equation that you'll see a lot of times in your book, um, and uh, we'll go from there. So let's just kind of try and see if I can draw this guy first. Something like this, something down here like this, something like this. So this is a rectangular solid, right? And then I can go behind here, and I can say, all right, I'm going to drop this dotted line down here, something like this, something like this. Okay, so trying to do a little, my best to do a sort of a three-dimensional figure. Now, length, width, and height doesn't really matter because it's you can flip it around and redefine whatever you want. But typically, most people would say that this direction is the height. That's how far up it is. The length is typically, most people are going to say the long direction. And the width is going to be whatever's left over, the other direction here. So there's three dimensions. There's this way, there's this way, which forms a rectangle on the bottom. And then the height of the thing is just how far the thing is sticking up. Now, if we were to find the surface area of this, how would you do it? Right? How would you do it? Well, what you would say, we'd call it surface area to say that we're finding the area over all of the surfaces. What you would say is first consider the top and the bottom, right? So the bottom is a face right here, but it's a, it forms a rectangle. And one direction of that rectangle is L, and the other direction is W, length and width. So we know that uh, it's going to be L times W, right? That's the area of this bottom one here, right? But there's two of those, and the area of the top one also has the same dimensions because this is also L and this is also W. So we'll just multiply that by two. So we find the area of the bottom, and then we just double it because the area of the top has exactly the same dimension. So that's what this looks like. But then we have to add to that the area of the other faces. So let's look at the front and the back, this face and the one here. It has a dimension of L and also a height of H, right, of LH. So it'll be the length times whatever the height is, that will give me the area of the face that's on the front here, L times H, but I have two of them also. So I multiply by two because I have the front and I also have the one on the back. So I'm finding the area of the bottom, multiply by two because I have a top. I have the area of the front, but I multiply by two because I have the back, right? And then what is the other area? It's the sides here, right? So it's W is the dimension here, and then I have height but don't forget, this is also the height down here as well. So this is the height, and then W forms the two dimensions of the side uh, rectangle there. So it's HW or WH. So I can call it W times H, and then I'll multiply that one by two because I have one area here and then one on the other side. So from the top, for the bottom, I have this area, the bottom, L times the length times the width, but I'm doubling it because I also have a top, and then, for the front, I have the area length times height right here, but I'm doubling it because I have a back face, which is the same size. And then for the right-hand side, it's W times H. That's the area of this, but I double it because I have the other side. So I have two sides, four sides, six sides all together, and that's what this equation is. Now, typically what you'll see, the way you'll see it written, like in a book or something like this, is you'll see it as 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. Some of the letters might be flipped around, but you get the idea. Let me double check. 2LW, 2LH, 2WH. Uh, yeah, that's right. 
Um, so you can use this equation. You know, students, you know, say, hey, this is the surface area of a rectangular prism, and they'll just memorize it. But the problem is, is that it gets confusing to use that formula. Which, which, which one is L? Which one is H? And then you start just trying to put things into it, you know, uh, put the proper things in the proper locations. You don't really often know what you're doing. You're just trying to put the numbers in the right spot and calculate. But you often make mistakes because there's so many letters. So I'm showing you this because I want you to know, understand exactly why the twos are here. We talked about that. Why the letters are here. We talked about that. But I'm actually not going to use this equation at all when we actually calculate. So you'll see what we do here in a, in, a, in a minute. But this is the idea of what you'll see in a book and why you will be told that this is the surface area. So let's go over here and actually solve our first problem. What I'm going to do is forget about the formula. Sometimes students just plug into a formula. And sometimes the formula gets in the way. It's better for you to understand what you're doing. You're trying to find the area of all the faces. But since it's a rectangular prism, the top and the bottom are always the same. The left and the right are always the same, and the front and the back are always the same as well. So instead of trying to plug it into a formula, let's just look at the bottom here. The bottom of this thing is five millimeters long and two millimeters deep. So I can find the area of the bottom is five times two, right? So the area of the bottom is five times two, right? But I have two of those because I have an area on the bottom and on the top. So I multiply by two. So this little calculation is bottom and top. So bot means bottom and top, right? So I have five times two for the area, but I multiply by two because I also have a top and I have to add to that something else. So let's take a look at the front. The front is four millimeters tall and five millimeters wide. So five times four or four times five. So put four times five, that's the area of this front face, but I have two of them. So I multiply that by two. And this is front and back, like this. And then I have the area of the side. So let's take a look at this side. It's two millimeters this direction. The height of it is here, but it's the same as the height here, which is four, so it's two times four. So two times four, that's the area of this side, but I'm gonna double it because I also have another side on the, on the other uh, place there. I'll call this left and right. Right? So you see, I never really used the formula. I didn't really write this equation down and say, okay, what was L? Put it here, here, here. What is W? Put it here, here, here. You can do that if you want. But to me, it's actually much easier to just look at the figure, find the area of the bottom, then times two for the top, then find the area of this times two. And then I have it all written down without stressing out over where the letters go. So now we can calculate, right? So the surface area is going to be equal to, and now I have five times two, which is 10. I still have to multiply by two. Here, I have four times five is 20. I still have to multiply by two. Here, two times four is eight, and I still have to multiply by two. Right? What is 10 times two? It's 20. What is 20 times two? It's 40. What is eight times two? It's 16. Now you can line these up and do column addition, but these are actually easy to do in our head too. 20 plus 40 has to be 60, two plus two plus four is six. So this gives us 60, and then going up 10 more is 70, and then six more is six, so 76. So you had to say 20, 40, then 60, then 70, then six, so 76. 76 is the answer, and it is square millimeters for the bottom and the side and the top, and everything is square millimeters. We add them all up, we still get square millimeters. So it's 70 six square millimeters. Now the first example always takes the longest because they have to describe what is the equation, how does it work, what are we doing, and all that. The rest of them will go a little bit faster, but that's just the same concept we're gonna use for every single problem. We're just gonna get a little more practice doing it here. So what is the surface area of this rectangular prism? It has different uh, units and of course different numbers as well. So let's first examine the bottom. The bottom is seven in this direction, and three in the other direction, so seven times three. So I'm gonna write it as seven times three, that's the area of the bottom, but I have two of those, so that's the bottom and the top. Now what's the front? The front is seven times two, that's the area of the front, seven times two, so seven times two, but I'm gonna double that because I have a front and a back. And then the left side, or the right side, is three times this dimension is also down here, two, three times two, so I'll call it three times two, 
and I'm going to double that because I have a left and a right. And now I just have to carry out the multiplication. 7 times 3 is 21 times 2. And then 7 times 2 is 14 times 2. And then 3 times 2 is 6 times 2. Right? Now what do I have here? 21 times 2, I think you can convince yourself if you double this and double this, you just get 42. And then 14 times 2, if you multiply that out, you'll get 28. And then if you multiply this out, you'll get 12. All right, so you're going to add these up. I'm assuming you know how to add and carry by now. So when we add all three of those numbers together, we're going to get 42 plus 28 plus 12 gives you 82 exactly. And the unit, because I had area in kilometers, square kilometers everywhere, is the total area is in kilometers squared as well. So the answer is, let me just double check, 82 square kilometers. You find me checking my notes a lot because I make mistakes too, right? And I know that I make mistakes. So I have the answer here, but I'm not copying from my paper. I'm doing the work, but I'm just double checking, making sure I haven't made a mistake because I make mistakes all the time. All right, here we have problem number three. Let's find the surface area of this guy. Right, let's take a look at the bottom. The bottom is this face. It's three times eight. That's gonna give us the area of the bottom. Right, three times eight, but I have two of those for the bottom and the top, so I'll multiply times two. Right, what about the front and the back? I guess I'll call this the front. This is the front, let's call that the back. Four times three would be the area of the front. Four times three, but I have two of those, so I'll multiply by two. And then the side, here's the side, it's eight, and then here we have four, eight times four is the area of the side, but I have two of those. So I have eight times four and I have another one. So what do I have? Three times eight, 24 times two. And then four times three is 12 times two. And then eight times four is 32 times two. Let me just double check myself. All right, let's take a look. What do we get when we multiply 24 times two? If you double each of these, I think you can convince yourself you'll get 48. 12 times two is 24. And again, if you double both of these, you'll get 64. So let me just double check, 48 plus 24 plus 64, if you line these up and add them, I'm convinced that by now you know, you know how to add, you'll get 136. And the units, because it was in centimeters everywhere, is centimeters squared or square centimeters, 136 square centimeters. I do have one more, let me take these down and we'll conquer our last one right now. All right, here's our very last problem. Let's calculate the surface area of this rectangular prism. So let's take a look at the bottom. Right, we have one uh, inch in one dimension and 10 in the other. So one times 10 is the area. So call it one times 10. And I have two faces, the bottom face and the top face. So that's the area of the top and the bottom. And then for the, let's take a look at the front and the back. The front would be this little bitty face here, nine times one, that's the area there, nine times one. But I have two of those faces because I have the front and I also have the back right there. And then I have the right and the left side. Now the right side is 10 and the nine dimension is the same here. So 10 times nine, but I have two faces there. So it's the right and the left uh, there. So let's go ahead and continue calculating. Here we have one times 10 is 10 times two. Nine times one is nine times two. 10 times nine is 90 times two. And so what do I get? 10 times two is 20. Nine times two is 18. And 90 times 2 is 180, because 9 times 2 is 18, with another 0 is 180, right? So what is the surface area? You can see that with the 180 and the 20, that's 200, and then 18 will give you a total of 218. And the units are square inches, because I have inches everywhere, so square inches. So 218 is the final answer. All right, so notice that when I started the lesson, I drew a picture, I put letters to illustrate the length and the width of the, and the height of a rectangular prism, and I showed you how we arrived at this equation down here, and this equation is what you will usually see in a class or in a book or your teacher or somebody will say, use this. But I don't know about you, but when I look at this, I get a little overwhelmed. There's so many letters, they're all in different positions. It's real easy to get confused. Is it LH or is it LW? It's very easy to get confused and to take the proper number and put it in the proper position. And then even when you get the answer, you don't really know what you're doing if you just follow it because it's just a bunch of letters. But notice that when we solved our problem, I never ever wrote the equation down. Instead, we thought through what it means to calculate the surface area. What is the area of the bottom? Okay, boom, got that, times two. That's the total area of the top and the bottom. 
What is the area of the front? Okay, there it is. Times two, that's front and back. What is the area of the right side? Okay, times two, that's the left and the right. And then crank through it. That is typically how I prefer you to work. Sometimes you have to use the equation. They're more complicated and a little, a little harder to understand what they mean. But when we have an equation like this that you can understand what it means, it's better to throw the equation away and just understand what you're doing. That's my opinion. That's why we did it this way. I'd like you to solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to part two. Same concept, but in the next lesson, we will have decimals and fractions to deal with, which will uh, make it a little harder. But ultimately, it's the exact same process as we've done here. So following on to the next lesson, we'll conquer the surface area of rectangular prisms in part two.